so he couldn't adjudicate him on that disorder or at least at least bring it up because the defense never brought it up well as far as i know the judge can't i mean here either the judge okay. can't introduce a defense that the defense has not raised i think he gave the defense enough hints <laughs> that well yeah i would say so have. by the way you might want to go talk to your client about i don't know him being a little nuts you, you might want to go do that but it, yeah, it never happened. And and there and the reason too that I bring this up is that believe it or not, there are actually equivalent cases. There's the case of James Riva. So this was way back in 1980, sort of before the whole vampire craze yeah. thing. Yeah, sort of hit right. So he, uh, James Riva, uh, murdered his own grandmother. He he shot and murdered his own grandmother because he believed that he was a 700 year old vampire. <laughs> Well, it, well, why would he have to shoot <laughs> Granny? Exactly. The cookies not taste good or what? Um, he said that he told psychiatrists he thought his grandmother um, came to feed on him as he slept. And he believed that he was satisfying his masters in the netherworld of vampires by making this kill. So basically he believed she was an elder vampire that oh. he was sent to kill. Oh, well, yeah, no, I mean, I'm not saying it makes sense to us, but that's uh, what he thought. Well, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And so he, um, oh, it looks like, sorry, I thought he did try to shoot her, but he stabbed his disabled grandmother. Why in the would heart a vampire use a gun? And shot her gold, he shot her with gold bladed bullets. What? And set the house on fire. Well, yeah. well, hold on. Why would a vampire at 700 years old, 700 years old use a gun? I would have thought a stake to the heart would have worked. I mean, really, if you want to go by the lore. The vampire you know, lore. If I'm going to be the victim of one of these things, I'm going to be like, let's forego the stake. I think they uh, use no, gold plated bullets. You now. know what I'm saying, though, right? I mean, uh, oh, it doesn't fit the lore. I mean, you know, uh, anyhow, yes, I, I'd rather be shot than stabbed with a stake to the heart. Absolutely. If I got to pick one, hmm, shoot me and get done really fast or stab me and I might lay there for six hours. Hmm. Y y you know, I get you. I get where you're going with that. But. This case here that we're talking about, this guy, that this Matthew Hardman, he, I'm looking to these court, some of these court documents here. They're online. Yeah, I mean, all the earmarks were there. I mean, you know, I'm not anywhere near as skilled as you are, Clarissa, but even I can see the glaring inconsistencies where he could have been. That defense could have been raised at any time because it clearly was deranged. He told right. the police this is what he was doing. He copped the black mass. He told them everything. He said he was a vampire or wanted to be a vampire. It was all there. It really was all there in black and white in the statements to the police. And and even when you raise, I mean, just to make it clear, too, to to those that are listening, even when you raise the defense of, of not guilty by reason of insanity, I, I want to say that, especially in America, I don't know about other countries. I'm not going to speak to there, but especially here, there are a lot of times when the jury doesn't go for it anyway. Honestly, if, if the crime is bad enough, uh, there are, are lots of times when, I mean, I, I used to work on, uh, just to remind people, I used to work on death row, the only death row in the state. And I had a caseload of individuals who were mentally ill who, in my mind, some of them anyway, were not competent at the time they committed their crimes, but they were sent to death row anyway. Is that the temporary the insanity people, though? I mean, the ones, let's just no, say... I, you, no, no, I'm talking about the people that are still absolutely psychotic okay, and you, were psychotic at the time, yeah, but the jury say, convicted them anyway. I was going to say, you hear a ton of cases, or at least you used to hear more, like, uh, for instance, the uh, crime of passion. Right. Oh, first, was, let, let me make this clear. Uh, temporary insanity, crime of passion. I don't believe in it. Never have. No. Never will. You, you don't think no. there's temporary insanity where something drives you so nuts that you're uh, you're willing to kill over it? You would not believe the amount of cases like that that are premeditated when you look really? at them. So, See, no, yeah. no, I don't. Yeah, well, You would know. No, I, mean, I don't. You know, they, you, they, they bought a gun. They bought bullets. They went to the range, blah, blah, blah. And then they had temporary insanity. Really? Well, that that is true. Um, that yeah. is true. I got a bridge in I got a bridge in uh, New York. I can sell you. No, <laughs> the the whole temporary insanity, like crime of passion thing. I I I have seen thousands of inmates now. The amount of times that I've actually seen that be real, a handful. 
And how, and how many make- of them used guns that they bought and went to the range and practiced with first? That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, stabbing it's- instruments and that where they had domestic violence two months before that where they yeah. tried to stab her. And didn't. I mean, like, it, no. The whole temporary insanity thing, by the way, don't try it. It won't work. It doesn't work. It never will. I, I It just... It's a bad defense. It's always been a bad defense. Like people that have, especially people with domestic violence histories, that they tend to be the ones that do, you know, claim the crime of passion. If you're in a contentious marriage where you are talking with your coworkers about how your life would be easier without your spouse, guess what? (laughs) Temporary insanity is not going to work. Just not. Yeah, don't be talking about that. But that's what happens. Those are always the people that claim temporary insanity. (laughs) By the way, I'm offing her Wednesday. I'm just letting everyone know. Like, okay, here's here's a little primer for all of those out there that think that they could claim insanity. The people that actually successfully have a defense of insanity are people that tell their lawyers that they're not. Like James P. Riva. Yeah. He was clearly insane, claimed to his lawyer that he wasn't, and didn't want to use the insanity defense. Remember the woman that wore a diaper and traveled across yes, the country? Yes. To kill another man? Yes. Also didn't want to use the insanity defense. People that should <laughs> use the insanity defense always go to their lawyers I, I, and go, what yeah, are you talking about? I'm yeah, fine. yeah, the woman that drove 27 hours wearing yep. a diaper and then stopped and murdered people. Yeah, yeah, right. I remember her. Yeah, that old yarn. Those yep. are the people that the insanity defense is reserved for, and those are the attorneys that should know better. And in Hardman's case, his attorney should have known better, and they didn't. But but the people that are like, oh, yeah, it was temporary insanity, it was a, a crime of passion. Like, that's the other thing, too, when you think of crime of passion. It's taken time to build up those feelings. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Typically, yeah. It's, it's usually somebody that maybe, let's say here's the classic example for crime of passion, a man who comes home and finds his wife in, in bed with another man. Sure. Okay. Typical crime of passion. He shoots both of them, goes to his lawyer. It's a crime of passion. But usually the man came home early because he suspected his wife was cheating, bought a weapon because he suspected his wife was cheating, did, you know, started looking at her email because he suspected. Ah, gotcha. There's a pattern. Yeah. There's there's there's... a pattern. It's not accidental because typically when it's an accidental discovery, people don't know what to do. Yeah. They just freeze. Deer in the headlights. Yeah. 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 Like, oh my God, I came home and expected to find my wife sick at home on the couch and Oh, no. There was the mailman. The milkman <laughs> stopped by. Yeah. There's usually not. A yeah, we don't even drink milk. Again. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. I don't understand. That's a more common reaction. I would imagine. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, interesting. Well, the one thing we haven't talked about is just the appeal of vampires. And, of course, I think in this case, it's kind of a combination of he's a young guy, 17 years old. So you kind of have the the sexiness. They're the sexiest of the monsters. You know, zombies are not sexy. Frankenstein is <laughs> not, not really. Sexy. No, no. He's just kind of Were- pieced together. Werewolves, yeah. they're too scary to yeah. be sexy. Yeah, um, unless you're in Twilight, yeah. evidently. Yeah, unless you're Team Jacob for yeah. some reason. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, well. Sorry. They had yeah. sparkly vampires. So, um, uh, but vampires are, you know, still... Uh, have have more humanity, Correct. retain more humanity. They are not necessarily voluntarily in that position, so they may bemoan the position that they're in. Um, involuntary immortality. All this, of course, depends on which worldview you know uh, that that you're buying into, because there's so many different rules. Kind kind of every story universe has its own rules. Many of these vampire rules were created by Bram Stoker, or at least collected by Bram Stoker yeah. f- for Dracula, and uh, and then of course new ones were came along for the film, uh, the first filming of Dracula, or filmings. Of Dracula, and so that's evolved. So a lot depends on you know which world, which universe your vampire is in, as far as what the rules are and how long they live and what they need to do to live, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, if you can live forever and be a sleek, sexy guy, and all you have to do is periodically, you know, drink some old lady's blood. <laughs> <laughs> That, that might have some appeal. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, it is kind of an appealing sort of monster story out of all of them. Well, you know? sure. It, I mean, look at uh, Dracula got the girls. You know what I mean? He had that allure, that animal magnetism. The brides. Exactly. Yeah, and for and for a kid that everybody said that he was kind of shy, that he kept to himself. I think you can see that by looking even at his mugshot, that he's probably not the most outgoing guy. Um, he lived in a very small town. Like, his appeal at that time in his life was probably pretty limited. So the idea that being a vampire, being attractive, being immortal, being irresistible, uh, being outside the rules, like... I can see why all of those things would attract a younger person. Well, and the power to mesmerize. Remember, sure. all, all he had to do was, you know, Dracula, all he had to do was look him in the eye. Follow me. You, you were you were under his power. So, yeah. yes, think how appealing that is. Man, so I'm going to become the, a vampire now. All I got to do is gonna, crack a vein once say, in a while. Come on, I'm done with that. Here's the real question. I, I'm actually being serious. Do either of you believe in vampires? No, personally, I do not. I don't think there's okay. any real do vampires out there. Well, I mean, are there people who think they're vampires no. and who drink blood? Yes, there are. No, okay, are there they, are. Now, does are they have... immortal? Yeah. Um, do they have supernatural powers? No, I don't think they do. Okay. I so think that there's bats. Out. There's bats that are vampire bats, but I think that's the closest thing that we have <laughs> to a, a real like vampire that. floating around. All right, so nobody, like nobody in our little, because I do not believe in them. Either, I was gonna so. say, don't tell me, Clarissa, you believe in vampires. All right, don't not go down that turnpike with me. No, no don't no, do no, it. No, I definitely don't believe in it. But <laughs> it's it's one of those things that has become much less. because okay, for for a psychologist, when you're, I guess, sort of judging delusions, right? There are two categories. So there used to be in the DSM. I don't know that the two categories necessarily exist now, but in the DSM, when I learned it, right. There's bizarre delusions, okay, and non-bizarre delusions. A non-bizarre delusion might be something like, I think the cops are following me. The reason it's non-bizarre is because that could actually happen. They probably right? are. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah, it could actually happen. And a bizarre delusion would be something like aliens have implanted something in my skull would be more bizarre. I guess it really got to me when I was writing up this case, thinking about it, like, is vampirism bizarre or non-bizarre because of what our culture has done mm. to it? If you look at the real full, you know, thousands actually uh, of years history right. of vampires, um, almost every culture has had a vampire-like creature. Now, what it really, the, the true essence of vampirism is to be a revenant to return from the dead all the other stuff is just window dressing so is it possible that somehow some way people are cursed you know to return from the dead and this has been a real fear throughout much most of human history a fear of the dead they you go that that body goes from being a fa a beloved family member to something really feared, mm. right? When they die, and so yeah. that's that's the myth, and the, and that's the background of it. So, is such a thing possible? I I mean I I, I don't think so in in the physical realm. I think it's much more likely, you know, on a spirit level uh, that that. There would be a return and, and even vampiric behavior from mm -hmm. a spirit type activity. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I know we're running out of time. We got, but no. We, yeah. We I do it. not think that Dracula like vampires nope. exist. I, no. I don't believe that mm -hmm. either. But uh, for more information on this, if you want to read the write up for yourself, make sure you drop by the criminal dot com. Again, that's the criminal dot com. That is Clarissa's website. And, of course, make sure you drop by americas-most-hana.com. Download this episode. Listen to it again. Tell your friends. Until tomorrow night, everyone take care of each other, love each other, and, and don't suck any blood, all right? You're not a vampire. Thank you for listening to this edition of After Hours AM. And please remember to like us on Facebook and also follow us over on Twitter.